the trade that I took. So let's toggle on some executions. And this one was taken in a paper trading account. It wasn't taken in a live account or any um, prop firm accounts. The reason for it is the day after a holiday, I don't like to trade with any live money, so, but I will get in price action just to get myself back to used to price action because it's been a long weekend. So this was taken in a paper trading account and you can see I originally sold five contracts, bought back three. Well, actually let's go down to the smaller time frame that I used, easier to see. So I sold five contracts here, bought back three down here, and then I moved my stop to break even. So it came, stop me out for the final two at break even. And then as price started to trade lower, um, I realized we were going to sell side liquidity, which is what I was trying to target on that run. So I got back in with my two contracts that was taken out at break even. And then I just wrote it down until we took out this low right here. And I bought back the two down here. And so now let's get into why I actually took the trade. So going back to that five minute chart, and as always, blue shaded areas, London open, New York open right here, AM session, PM session. These are the, I like to trade for stock indices. So what I was looking at was we had this fair value gap right here that overlapped with this breaker. Why was it a breaker? Because we took out sell side. So this swing low, we traded below it, then traded higher to take out the buy side, and then eventually went below this low again on a closing basis. So that would be a bullish breaker. And then within that bullish breaker, we had a fair value gap right here. And then additionally, if I go over to the NASDAQ, notice how the NASDAQ is making higher high, making me higher the day right here at 1.40 p.m. But if we go back to the S&P, the S&P was not making high, so we have divergence here. So even if I measure from that high where the divergence was created down to the low, use my optimal trade entry preset, you can see that price comes back to optimal trade entry right there. So we have optimal trade entry um, after SMT within a bearish breaker in an imbalance. So a lot of things showing me that price is probably going to attack lower. And then additionally, if we go back out to the 12 hour chart, so like the icing on the cake or our chart actually. So go back to the 12 hour first. So we had the 12 hour imbalance, right? That was right here. So that balance price range. So these gray lines was the 12 hour imbalance. However, on the four hour chart, we had this imbalance here. So what I'm gonna do is just draw a box on it and then we're just gonna make it gray. So we had this imbalance within the 12 hour imbalance. And then additionally, if we go out to the NASDAQ, we had the 12 hour imbalance here. So we had the 12 hour imbalance on NASDAQ. So when we go back to the five minute chart, so the entry that I'm taking is in this run here, that's in the S&P. So notice how the NASDAQ hasn't reached its 12 hour fair value gap yet. So we have a clear target on the NASDAQ and then on the S&P, it hasn't reached. Remember the gray box was that four hour imbalance. It hasn't reached that. So we have two clear targets that price may reach into. So a lot of things um, working in the favor of being bearish. So then now once I have all of that um, based off the higher time frames, now I'm dropping down to a one minute chart. So after we trade up into this um, fair value gap breaker, we have a change in the state of delivery here. We close below that up close candle. So that's a bullish block. And then additionally, we have on the 30 second chart, a shift in market structure right here. So let's label that market structure shift. So we have the market structure shift right there. And why is this low an important low? Because if we measure the imbalance right here, 50% is at 5315.75. And the low of this candle, if we look at the top left up here, when I hover over it, is equal to 5315.75. So this is a swing low that comes to at least consequent encroachment of the imbalance. And I teach teach this in my free Omni Model course. It's also my only course. And any other course that I potentially make in the future will also be free. I believe education should be free. I'm not gonna rant too much on that. Let's get back to the trade. So this intermediate term low, when we take that out, also changing the state of delivery on the one minute chart and then all the narrative that I've given you guys based off of the higher time frame chart. Now, when that happens, I'm just dropping down to the 15 second chart 
and we have this imbalance right here. So this imbalance, let's just draw a line on it, make it black. We have this imbalance. So when price comes back up into the imbalance, I went short on this candle right here. And then my first target was the high end of this imbalance. So we have that right here. So we had this imbalance. As soon as price dropped into that, I wanted to take off three because I sold five up here. Take off three. And then, like I said, I moved my stop loss to break even. So you see, I got in at 53.16 and a quarter. And then it stopped me out at the same price. And then as price started to trade lower, what I was looking at was, so I'm going to delete this real quick is we had this inversion fair value gap right here. And I'm gonna, at the end of this, gonna attach the execution video so you can see that none of this stuff is hindsight. You're gonna see all these levels on my chart so you know that this is exactly what I was looking at. However, we had um, the inversion fair value gap. Let's make that gray. So when price closes through it, notice how the bodies are respecting the high end of that fair value gap. So what I'm looking at is Okay, we went up, but we didn't outside of it. We're within these volume balances. So this is indicating to me that this was just another retracement and that price may go lower. So when we start to trade beneath it, I personally, on this candle right here, I was looking for price to come back up into and tap just the bottom end of the inversion for value gap. And I was going to go short. But as you can see, it did not do that. So now what I'm looking at was this long wick right here at consequent encroachment of the wick so now boom we close through that we hit it twice we start to sell off we create a volume imbalance so as soon as price comes back up into that volume imbalance that is why i went short on this candle right here but truthfully i really wanted to get short at the low end of the inversion fair value gap but you can't force price to give you what you want you just have to work with what you're getting so like i said i'm going to attach the execution video at the end and you're going to see the inversion for value gap consequent encroachment of this wick using it as an inversion level the order block the breaker everything and then i got out here within the well i didn't get out exactly at the four hour for value gap but you can see where price was reaching to because it hits it has a retracement but my actual exit was at the low right here I'm not trying to be too greedy and then for the rest of the day you can see we hit the bottom end of that balanced price range on the 12 hour chart and you can see that we've had our reversal for the pm session which is pretty nice